Amen. Amen. It's good to be in the presence of God. It's good to be in a place where um, you can learn, when you can discover um, things about you, who you are, who God is in you, and who is your enemy that you are facing and challenging and fighting. And discover the, the victory that God has given, the superiority that we have as children of God, as Christians. Amen. Um, you know, we talk about, and we... Um, you know sometimes people say well your church or you you guys are you guys are you know demon chases and I like how the pastor answered this uh, this uh, this comment he said no we're not demon chasers we're God chasers and demons get exposed when you truly chase God and so uh, when you truly walk in the anointing and power of God Jesus comes into the temple he wasn't chasing demons he came he said that the spirit of God is upon me and as soon as he said that Demons couldn't stand the anointing of God, couldn't stand the anointing of the Holy Spirit and they were exposed, expelled, life were saved, life were healed, delivered and people lived on happy and purpose-driven lives. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. We chase the Holy Spirit, we chase His presence and fellowship with Him. Amen. This is our goal and this is our uh, purpose in life. Um, today I want to talk about a subject that we've talked a lot about it and uh, this today is just going to be it's not going to be something new it's just going to be a reminder of something that uh, you might already know but it will encourage us as it will encourage us to continue to work to uh, and and work through the process that we're in today the title of my message will be a mind uh, called mind management and we're going to talk a little bit about our thoughts and going to draw a couple of things from the Word of God that will help us, will help us to, to set our mind on a proper course and to live a victorious life. We understand that mind management is essential to a life of victory. If we are to live a life of victory, if we are to live a life of um, a life that we, that, a successful life, a life that can accomplish much, we need to learn how to manage our mind without managing our mind, without managing our thoughts, uh, we will not be able to achieve and accomplish the very things that God has called us to accomplish. Every successful person and every person that accomplished much in life understands one thing is that your mind has to be sharp. Your mind has to be focused. Your mind cannot be wandering around. Your mind can't be a sidewalk that allows everything and everyone to walk upon. Mind management is essential for the life of victory, to live a life of victory. A, a prophet Ibn Joshua always quotes and says that to the extent that we think the thoughts of God is the same extent that we will be able to walk in the power of God. To the extent that we think the thoughts of God is the same extent we will be able to walk in victory in our life. Is the same extent we will be able to live in blessing and prosperity in our life. To the extent that we allow God's thoughts become our thoughts is the extent that we'll be able to walk in healing and health in our lives. We have to understand one simple truth and fact that the quality of our thoughts, the quality of our mind will determine the quality of our life. If we examine our life and we see where we are at today, it would reflect the place where we are at with our mind. So if we don't like the place where we're at in life, if we don't like as how far we achieved or how, how, how far have we gone or what we have accomplished, we should examine our mind and we should examine our thinking and our thoughts to see maybe there's things in our life, there's some things in our mind that need to be changed and need to be challenged and need to be uprooted. Now we have to understand that there are seasons in life that we go through and a season in our life does not determine uh, who we are and where we're at and the, uh, in the quality of our mindset but if what we've been going through has been already for generations or it's been already since the time we were born or it's been for prolonged for many many years already in our lives maybe we should stop to consider and to re-examine our patterns of thinking and our thought life and so this morning I just want to shine a couple yeah, shine a light from God's Word on couple parts of our thinking and give couple practical things for us to be able to manage our mind better and to be overcomer in our mind. Bible says in Proverbs 23 7 that whatever man thinks in his heart 
so is he a lot of times and I used to say that that whatever man thinks so is he so what that how what that kind of what what I was thinking is that you know if I had a bad thought that I means I'm a bad person but Bible says that whatever man think is in his heart so is he there is difference of having a a one-time thought or a time or a thought sliding through your head or coming to your head or a thought that or thoughts or patterns of thoughts that constantly spring forth in your life in your mind that things that constantly come out of your heart there is a saying is that you can't stop a bird flying over your head but you can stop a bird from nesting on your head there is difference between your thoughts that come through in your mind thoughts that run through your head and thoughts that constantly dwell in your mind scientists somehow discovered and uh, after some kind of a study that they did that they said that about 70 to 80 percent of your thoughts are repetitive thoughts that means it's the thoughts that you taught yesterday it's the thoughts that you were thinking the day before and the day before and so forth and so on when I read that quote you know I actually kind of start looking and experimenting myself could it be really true that 70 or 80 percent of our thoughts of my day are the same that was yesterday and the day before yesterday and to shock and reality I discovered that actually true in my in my own life and if you closely examine your thoughts you begin to think you what you think every day from day to day you will discover that it's very very similar good portion of your thoughts the dominant portion of your life of your of your day are the similar thoughts it is those thoughts that are dominant and predominant in your life is those thoughts that are uh, occupy most of the time of your life majority time of your day is those thoughts that really matter you know we all have the things that we need to worry about the things that we have to think about we got jobs we got bills to pay we got you know we got things that come up throughout the day it's not these thoughts that matter it's the thoughts that are predominant in my life the thoughts that repeat over and over and over again these are the thoughts that I'm going to be talking about today these are the thoughts that we are addressing today you know as I begin to learn about thinking and the importance of thinking and the importance of controlling your mind and managing your thoughts and mind I was I found myself almost in a helpless situation because then you know you get so many thoughts and so many things and you don't know where to start from and like I said in the, in, in, in the beginning is that our our concern is not the thoughts that come in and go our concern are about the thoughts that come the thoughts that stay and the thoughts that we entertain and so <clears throat> we're not you have to understand that we are as a person we are a combination we are a sum of thoughts a person that is in a white house and a person that is an un under the bridge they are the same kind of people they have two legs they have two arms they have two eyes they have uh, ears to hear they got all the same faculties of bodies like you and me do what sets them apart is that four by four box in their head that's all that sets them apart is the pattern of thinking the thoughts that they've developed how they think about themselves how they think about others and how they view the situation the circumstances around them that's what sets a president and a bomb on the bridge apart that's what what sets a person that uh, works a minimum wage job and a person that moves, owns a multi-million dollar business it's not necessarily the talents that gives and their abilities but a lot of times most of the time it's the mindset that they carry most people that are very successful very rich people that accomplished a lot people that that influence our society and our history a lot were actually not the most talented people a lot of times they were actually an outcast a lot of times there were people that actually did not did, didn't think that they have a certain talent or certain ability so they focused their their mind they focused their time to develop their mind and they became as a result of it they became great so we we can make one thing clear for ourselves is that it's not 
what we have or don't have that defines us it's not even the gifts or abilities that we have that determines who we are or where we can be but it's the quality of our mind the quality of our thoughts and our pattern of thinking Paul said when I was a child I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child but when I grew up I put away I put away childish things first Corinthians chapter 13 verse 11 many people they start off like Paul like everybody else they start off as children and it's normal for a child to live and think and reason as a child but many people maintain and stay at the level of thinking as a child they are very emotional they allow their emotions control them you know I have I have an eight month old child and you know when she was two three four months she was just uh, she was just a child you know not much but now you know she's beginning to grow a character and she's beginning to show attitude she's beginning to show emotions and when she was hungry like for instance this morning you know she doesn't care about you know golden egg vegetable that you play for her she doesn't care about her favorite brush she doesn't care about uh, uh en entertainment and usually if she's cranky you bring her up to a balcony and show her things and you know she likes to be in outside and she starts you know coming down she didn't care about none of those things she wanted food and she wanted milk and she showed her attitude because she was driven by her uh desire and she's controlled by her at this stage and so a lot of people as they matured physically mentally maintain as children and apostle paul says when i was a child it was okay i reasoned like a child and i thought like a child but when i begin to grow up physically i begin to i continue to grow mature i begin to i continue to grow mentally and this is the problem that we sometimes even have in our society is that we have we have you know children become boys and then stay as boys you know mentally but physically they become fathers you know and they play video games with their children when they grow up you know it's fun and cool when you just do it as a once in a while type of a thing just to uh, entertain yourself uh, with the child and have a time with your child but when you do that and you play more video games than your child does that's a problem okay that's a, that's a bit of a problem and so it's a funny example but it's an example that shows us clearly that what the, the, the epidemic that we're facing in our society that we can be matured in body in physical appearance but very little matured in our mind and our pattern of thinking is completely bad or wrong bible says that in romans 12 2 don't copy the behavior and customs of this world but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think many people get surprised that Christians act don't act like Christians supposed to act well because they are still growing as Christians and we shouldn't be surprised and sometimes maybe we could catch ourselves acting a certain way um, that we shouldn't be acting as Christians if we don't allow ourselves if we don't submit ourselves for training of mind if we don't actively engage into mind management we will continue to think the way we were thinking before the way we grew up thinking the way the world and the customs of this world taught us how to think and we will remain at the level where we are at so I hope you with this small intro you begin to realize and and, and renewed the urgency and um and and, and uh, necessity for mind management for and for you to begin to actively begin to engage into working on your mind our thoughts they create expectations and our, and our expectation creates our situation we must understand that if we want to change our life around 
if we want to be different, if we want to have a different situation in our circumstances where we live, if we want to change the family that we're in, if we want to change the kind of income we make, if we want to change our relationship with God, if we want to change our relationship with our spouse, with our children, we have to change our expectation. And in order to change our expectation, you have to change the way you think. Because your thoughts will produce certain feelings and expectation in your life. Example, there was just recently on your news, Fox News just literally last week or a week before. This woman was pregnant with her first child. And they were excited to have, I believe it was a baby girl. And right about, about halfway through her pregnancy, she said, I got this, this weird feeling and expectation that I will have a c-section and that the eye will not come out from anesthesia you know they put you under anesthesia and I said and, and she and she's like and I had this weird feeling that I was, I'm gonna have I'm, I'm not gonna give birth through um, you know normal means but I'm gonna have a, a c-section and I'm gonna go under anesthesia and I'm not gonna come out so she goes into labor guess what happens she can't give birth for some reason so they have to do an anesthesia they have to do a c-section and they put you on anesthesia and guess what happens she does not come out she does not wake up from anesthesia and so and not only that her her health begins to deteriorate really really quick and um she goes on life support they can't wake her up uh they put her in a in a medical seduced coma and just a, one of the nurse had an idea what if we put a newborn child on her chest and, and have a child be maybe it'll help her to keep fighting for her life and and sure enough when the mother heard the cry of the baby she began to her vitals improved suddenly she began to fight for her life and she woke up from the coma and it was a year later that or nine months later that she was they were on at fox news and they were given uh, she was given that story about herself but my point is this is that she got a thought that something's gonna go wrong those thought produced feelings that produced expectation and expectation produced negative results produced the situation that she was in thank God for his mercy for his grace that she was rescued and she was you know now they have both of them are healthy and both of them are well our life is determined by the quality of our mind by the quality of our thoughts or lack of it and so if we want to change our our situation our circumstances around we must change our thoughts so that our thoughts can produce proper expectation and that our expectation will produce the situation and circumstances desired in our life we must pay very close attention to what we think and not allow ourselves to think negative to allow ourselves to think um, in, a, in a way of defeat, to allow ourselves to think in a way of poverty, of bad health and, and things of that sort. Because those things, they pave a way for these situations. Uh, now, <clears throat> I want to explain a couple, a couple things. Um, Bible talks about uh, strongholds and we're going we're gonna to read a scripture here soon. Uh, and of removing strongholds in our mind and I want us to kind of lay a foundation before we go into the scripture about stronghold what strongholds are if you can put that up uh, put up the slide stronghold is basically a mindset a mindset the way my mindset is get gets developed is mindset is developed by collection of thoughts we get multiple collection of thoughts and that's the way our mindset is developed and the way we get a collection of those thoughts is by repetitive thoughts is by rehearsing those thoughts for example let me give you an example that probably most of you can relate to somebody does something wrongs you unfairly and you begin to think you walk around and you begin to think oh I would say this to them I would do this to them and I'm gonna tell them this and I'm gonna tell them that you know and so you're walking around rehearsing what you're gonna say what you're gonna do what you're gonna do and so if you're not careful if you don't deal with it properly you're gonna begin you begin to form 
so you begin to have multiple different collection of thoughts you begin to think from this angle and I would say this and I would do this and and this is why they're wrong and this is why I'm right and all this stuff so you begin to form a bouquet of collection of thoughts you begin to form a certain mindset of the person and that becomes eventually a stronghold in your mind that even if you find out later that this person is you know you you, you try to mend things you try to reconcile but you have this already a stronghold in your mind that for some reason you try to be good you try to do good with that person but it's just something stopping you it's a stronghold that needs to be destroyed in your mind and that's how the stronghold gets created and it goes in every area of of our mind a lot of times what happens is a person begins to entertain a thought something happens in their life as some kind of tragic or trauma some kind of incident person begins to entertain a thought that I'm lonely I'm rejected nobody wants me and they begin to they begin to work on these thoughts they begin to think repeatedly on these thoughts they begin to collect all kinds of evidence in their thoughts all kinds of different different point of views and angles and it becomes a mindset in their life and then it becomes a stronghold that they battle and they constantly feel a rejection or fear or poverty mindset same goes in the opposite side when you have a successful mindset when you have a mindset that everything's gonna work out everything's gonna be good everything you begin to develop proper strongholds you begin to build proper things in your mind you begin to build proper mindset in your life it goes both ways but here's not here's the here's the most important part is that every stronghold has an occupant every stronghold that you build either attracts Holy Spirit into your life or it attracts an evil spirit into your life rarely a person gets demonized or demon possessed because of one act one accidental act usually what happens is is through a series of thoughts through repeated set of collection of thoughts that becomes a mindset and becomes a stronghold and then through a sin demon enters their life and stay in their life because of the stronghold satan enters into our life because of sin but stays in our life because of a stronghold and so if we want to get rid of so in our lives when we have when we allow thoughts of fear thoughts of anxiety of defeat i'm nobody nobody loves me god doesn't care for me nothing goes good in our life that attracts demonic spirit so if you constantly entertain negative thoughts of fear you attract spirit of fear if you constantly entertain thoughts of loneliness you attract thoughts of loneliness if you constantly entertain that i'm nobody nobody made it in my life uh, i'll never have enough money I'll always be you know from paycheck to paycheck you will attract the spirit of poverty into your life but on the opposite if you entertain the thoughts that I'm God's son God is on my side Holy Spirit involves in me he empowers me to overcome I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me you attract the spirit of God and enable him to work in your life and manifest himself manifest those things in your life so that's why our thinking life is so important if you want to prosper in your relationship with God you will not prosper in your relationship with God without proper mindset without proper thinking it's so important that in our life that we pay close attention to our mind and we manage our mind we manage our thoughts so how do we do that let's go to second corinthians verse 10 uh, verse second corinthians verse 10 uh second corinthians chapter 10 i'm sorry verse 4. <clears throat> i'm gonna read just follow along on the screen we use god's mighty weapons <clears throat> not worldly weapons to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false argument we destroy every proud obstacle and keep that keeps people from knowing god <clears throat> we capture the rebellion thoughts to teach them to obey Christ now Apostle Paul is addressing that to people but today we're going to use this principle and we're going to use this scripture to, to help us and to give us a blueprint and to give us steps how to manage our mind and how to defeat strongholds in our mind 
Because, you know, we, we can't go uprooting and, and conquering and, and, uh, and um, capturing other people's thoughts. And if our own thoughts are running rampant and if our own thoughts are out of control. So we're going to take this verse and we're going to break it down to a few things. And we're going to uh, learn a couple practical things to help us establish proper thinking, proper mindset and the way to do it. So <clears throat> first thing I want you to uh, see from this verse, I want you just to leave this verse on. He says that we use God's mighty weapons not worldly weapons what is he talking about God's mighty weapons what is the weapon of God it's the word of God Bible says that the word that the that the word of God is the sword of the spirit we use it to fight against the uh, against against the enemy the word of God when we take the word of God make it a standard of our life when it take when we take the scriptures when we memorize the scriptures when we arm ourselves with the word of God with the promises of God I'm the head I'm not the tail everywhere I go I'm blessed he God is with me God is on my side I am favored of the Lord he's supporting my position when we begin to arm ourselves with the promises of God with the scripture of God when we begin to allow the word of God to become when we allow our words to become one with the word of God when we begin to confess then we will be we begin to fight against those things those strongholds those things that in our life are running rampant those thoughts and we conquer it with the word of God so the word of God and the positive confession the faith confession and meditation upon the word of God is our weapon against every weapon of the enemy Apostle Paul also says that we use God's mighty weapons not worldly weapons. What are the worldly weapons? Worldly weapons are we, we you know we, we can see it especially in a day and age uh, we have many religions especially new age and positive thinking running rampant. It almost seems like the same thing as as the word of God. It almost seems like they took God's principle and they twisted it and put it a worldly twist on it but and so what is the worldly weapons? The worldly weapons can be positive thinking, behavior modification, meditation, worldly meditation by emptying, by emptying yourself, emptying your mind versus God's meditation is where you fill yourself with God's word. You know and, and, and to draw a, a, a clear picture, uh, the story comes to mind of David and Goliath. Both confessing positivity. Both are bold. Both confessing victory. Yet Goliath falls and David stands victorious. So we must, for ourselves, we must make a decision to use God's weapons, not worldly weapons. Not only, you know, not be deceived by only positive thinking. Yes, positive thinking is fine. It's good. And it works to a certain degree. But, the, but positive thinking cannot stand against the attack of the enemy. It cannot stand against Satan and demons himself. Only God's word has the power and authority to overcome those things. And so if I would tell you, if I would, if, if, we, if we had to go to war and I, you, you come into the room where you had, or you had to go in a fight and we would go into the armory, into the room and I'd say, pick any weapons. You got knives, you got blades, you got uh, pistols, you got rifles and which would you pick? You would pick a rifle, you would pick a gun. It's superior. Why bring a knife to a gunfight? You know the famous saying. So our choice of weapon is God's word because it's far superior than any other weapon. It's far superior than any meditation. It's far superior than any positive thinking. Yes, word of God has positive thinking. Yes, word of God has a meditation. But word of God is far superior than any other means or any other worldly ways of defeating and fighting and overcoming. And we see clearly in, in, the, in the story of David and Goliath. Um, so the next, uh, next thing is that um, bringing down the strongholds of human reasoning. So we talked about strongholds. There are strongholds of human reasoning. Thoughts of what is reasonably possible with human strength, human connections and human mind. Let me be clear on this one human reasoning is not wrong it has its place and some of us should use it a lot more often okay but human reasoning has limitation human reasoning has it cannot be understood 
it cannot be understood by um with human reasoning you can't understand faith and you can't measure spiritual things with human reasoning and there's a lot of strongholds of things that are possible and things that are impossible in our lives that are stopping us from achieving from obeying God and from achieving what he has in store for us for example uh, we understand that because of the law of gravity men couldn't fly and couldn't be up in the air and that was human reasoning man can fly but then when began when when the revelation came and a, a discovery came of the law of aerodynamics that was superior to the law of gravity man was able to fly this is kind of what it is that the human um human reasoning a lot of times limits us to what is possible what we can do what are resources the family we kind of grew up with I can't go beyond this I can't dream beyond this because this is what's possible and a lot of those strongholds they need to be removed anything that's contrary to God's to what God's word anything that limits us anything that's not according to the word of God needs to be removed okay another stronghold stronghold of false argument false argument is the is the strongholds that tell us that bring us all the arguments against us why we can't be who we can be the arguments that say that you are not loved you are nobody God doesn't love you people don't care for you it's those arguments it's those voices in our heads that bring arguments is that you never make it you will never achieve anything you will never amount to anything Bible says that we using God's word God's weapon the sword of the spirit we must take down human reasoning every limitation and we must take down every false argument every accusing voice everything that says you will not amount to nothing you tried hard and you failed you will not be able to succeed everything that says that you you are sick in your body and you cannot be made well there is no cure for you God doesn't love you every false argument needs to be removed by God's word there was a story and yeah you guys some of you remember the 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 story the testimony we played of a lady that she uh, because of a horse accident she was on a horse and she fell off she began to she got brain damage I believe or something happened to her that she started uh, having severe seizures and epilepsy and when one time she heard the word of God through CBN and the word of God be, got deep into her spirit and she knew at the moment she was healed and from that point on she stopped she had seizures for like 10 or 17 years or whatever I mean she was bound to the wheelchair so it was a terrible situation but from that moment on when she heard the word and she accepted that stronghold was removed in her life and she received that she was healed and for a whole month she didn't have one seizure but in one day one day she got severe seizures and she said it felt like all of those 30, 30 days were combined into one she used to have seizures every single day but she said it felt like all those 30 days were combined into one and she had the severe the most the worstest the severe seizure and epilepsy episode that she ever had that she thought she almost died and those false arguments in her head were screaming at her see I told you you are not healed see I told you God doesn't love you see you are not healed you will never walk you will never have a normal life you will always be this person you will always be sick and she said I fought with every fiber of my being that I could to remove those thoughts and declare no I am healed and I strike down every false fear every stronghold of the enemy that says I'm sick because I have received a new revelation I received a new thought I received a new um, a new word from God I have a sword of the spirit that I can fight that I am healed and after that epilepsy episode she never ever once already for decades that she ever had that episode ever once again let's put our hands together for Jesus <clears throat> The third thing that um, that uh, obstacles, the strongholds that we need to remove is proud obstacles. We need to, and I'm not going to stop on that. I'm just going to quickly mention. We need to rid of every thought of pride or every thought of self-righteousness. Thinking that, you know, the things that we can achieve with, without God. Every thought of self-sufficiency and self-dependence. Anything 
the, the thoughts that I, I don't need God I don't need to I can do it on my on my own I can over I can I, I can become somebody on my own that I don't need God every stronghold every thought every mindset of independency self-sufficiency of uh, self-righteousness needs to be removed in our lives <clears throat> how do we do it Bible says capture rebellious thoughts because you should have that point it starts by identifying every thought that is contrary to God's word it starts to recognize the thoughts that that are running rampant in your mind it beginning first thing that begins first thing that you have to begin to do is begin to identify those thoughts and be specific don't be general and begin to work to, uh, towards it I remember I was talking to one gentleman um, this week actually and, and and he said you know what I begin to see something in my my family and in my life you know throughout the, my fa my grandparents my parents my siblings and now I and I, I see that these certain emotions these certain thoughts these certain mindsets are running rampant in my life in, in my life and running in my family and I see how it's destroying and limiting from us us going forward and he says but now he's like the difference between me and my family and my siblings is that at least now I see them I recognize them and so even sometimes I'm not able to at the moment to snap out of it to be uh, and, and and to overcome it but at least I'm aware of it now and I'm working towards it it starts by capturing your thoughts it starts by first realizing which thoughts in your life are not from God not based on God's word coming out of pain hurt fear anxiety coming out of bad past experience begin to identify those thoughts number two uh, he says by capturing the rebellious thoughts and teaching them to obey Christ number two is you have to teach yourself how to think properly you know we think like but the biggest lie I think that I've had to battle with and and, and accept God's truth is that well I don't have control over my thoughts my thoughts are what they are they do what they do they are what they are and I just have to accept the, what, what what I think but it's not true even if you think about it if you stretch your hand everybody stretch your hands okay and now tell your fingers to move they're moving okay so we can from this example we see that we with our thoughts with our mind we can tell our body to do something now do the same thing tell your thoughts to your consciousness to think of your mom or your dad thinking about the first car that you got you're telling your inner man is telling your consciousness of what to think and what to do so strip that lie I think what I think and I can't control it it's not true it's not right it's a discipline that you have to exercise you have to understand that your inner man your spirit your subconscious Bible or uh, Bible calls a lot of times your heart has a dominion and tells your mind what to think you have a control and you can patrol your thoughts in your mind your mind is subject to your heart to your inner man to your spirit your mind is like a child it must be trained and as a I have a child and the child is growing up and as a responsible parent what I do is I train my child I tell her no you can't touch this no you can't do this you have to do this for now it's mostly no uh, but we'll get to the stage where it'll be yes okay but this is how it is how we start as a as a mind is that we have to treat it like a child that needs to be trained a lot of times in the beginning of our stage when we begin to take control of our mind and learn to manage our mind a lot of times what it's going to be is no 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 you're going to have to say no i'm going to think not going to think about this i'm not going to think about this i'm not going to think about that and positioning yourself and focus, focusing yourself on the other things now the key to it is not to say no to everything like pastor once said if you try to take a bone from the dog you're gonna get bitten you know the way to take the bone from the dog you have to toss him a meat to toss him something to get distracted with so you replace him with God's word and this is the biblical way of doing things you must take responsibility over your mind and you must you must teach it to obey Christ you must teach it to obey the word of God
and in conclusion you have to understand that it's a process it takes time it took you many many years some of you 20 25 30 35 40 50 60 years to get to the place where you're at to develop the mindsets and the mind that you have at this point you have to give God time you have to give Holy Spirit time to work with you to develop a proper mindset but it will not start unless you start it's not automatic it doesn't just happen mind management that means you have to have a manager you have to have a person you have to have your inner spirit that will be willing to manage your thoughts the way you do it is by reading the word of God memorizing the scripture surrounding yourself with proper people that can challenge you they can point things out in your life the way you do it is surround yourself with podcasts positive things proper things so you can learn to be a person that manages your mind and as a result you manage your life